the only small box I had. Um, and it's fairly compact in there as you can see. And the wiring is really a mess I think, but it, it is all there. We've got the self trip fuse over in that corner. The little PCB is held down with that little grommet there and it's trapped underneath the heat sink. The heat sink has its pins through the plastic body there and it's held in place by that bit of rubber which keeps all the wires neat that go to the outputs and inputs. Um, now on the top, due to lack of space because of the heat sink, I've kept the pot long. Um, I mean I've not trimmed it off very much really the knob could do with being down hiding in the nut but it would get in the way of operating otherwise it's only a test thing anyway but it keeps it all neat and sees how it does in a box so you've seen all the circuitry and you've seen how marvelous the control is now if I've wired it up correctly you will also now see how it works on the railway everybody and welcome back to the railway oh no that's not my channel hook is it hi everyone and welcome to model railways unlimited this is now the conclusion to the building controller from scratch and we're going to do some live testing there's the controller that you saw this is connected to my trusty modified Morley Vector 02 so that we can easily swap between the two and make a comparison that's the waveform from the um, scratch built controller and here comes the Triang M7 now she's actually been oiled now and I noticed that the last service she had was in 2004 so she was doing spectacularly well on those other tests As you see, she's managing a reasonable speed. A little bit of a bind on that curve there, but not too bad. So I'll now reset and switch back over to the Morley and try a similar sort of speed. So we're now on the Morley Vector 02, the modified Morley controller. Um, for those that don't know, I greatly reduced the smoothing capacitors on it from 1000 microfarad down to 100. It's much better control, less heating. Um, but just enough protection for coreless motors. Although weirdly, the new controller, the scratch built one, has no smoothing at all and there's no noise with coreless, but we'll look at that later. Here comes the M7. So really not a great deal of difference between the two there. So we'll now try the crawl test. So we're now on the Morley and I'm going to try gradually increasing the speed. That's probably the sort of minimum speed that she can go at and keep going. She's obviously got a few problems with her wheels there. So we'll now try the scratch-built controller. Okay, we're now on the scratch-built controller. 
gradually increase speed. Hit that snag. It doesn't seem to be quite the same sort of snagging as before. And that could be because this dis this controller circuit, described as a con closed loop circuit, which acts a little bit like a feedback controller and maintains the speed of the loco. So that's pretty impressive for a triang loco, isn't it? Notice there's no motor buzz or anything like that. And she's kept going all the way around. So the next loco on test is the Hornby H class. This is with a scratch built controller. Should say the circuits by one Roger Amos. Pretty good. H class on the Morley. Oh, stalled. Now our next contender, which is also on the Morley, is a DJ Models 1400 class, which as some of you may know uses an incredibly tiny coreless motor. So this is the Morley. Okay, here we go again with a 1400, this time on the scratch built controller. Now bear in mind, there is no smoothing at all on this controller. Uh, and you've seen the waveform 100 hertz ripple. So if anything's going to make a cordless motor buzz, it should be this. I've got to be honest with you, there's no buzz there at all. Well, she just has trouble on these um, bits of track. But now the camera is ever so close to the engine. You'd hear a buzz if there was one.
So there we are. Uh, I wonder what you think. My own conclusions are that the new controller is excellent for older models and perfectly okay for newer models and cordless. The advantage is probably the fact that it has a sort of speed compensation factor which the Morley doesn't have, but the modified Morley is equally very good at running at slow speed. So there we go, it is possible to make from scratch a model railway controller. Hope you enjoyed this short series. Any questions, put them in the comments. Cheers then.